Is Zalatash actually Azeroth? This comes from Noble. I haven't watched a Noble video in quite a while. It's speculation lore. I love to look into this stuff. Let's figure out. Could she actually be Azeroth? A corrupted version of Azeroth? A different timeline version of Azeroth? Enough talk. Let's watch the video. Hello, everyone. I'm planning on doing a proper deep dive into Zalatov and all the bits that we know so far. But while diving through the archives and gathering some of the stories, I had a couple of brain farts that popped up that I wanted to share. You guys in chat I sat down, I started to type out my scripts. It started off with a couple of ideas, but then the pattern started to unravel itself. And I've got two points that I want to come across. I've got two ideas in mind that I want to explain. One is that I think Zalatov is a manipulator like the Jailer. And two, I think that she is potentially the dark side of Azeroth. I've got more to support number one than I have number two. What? Hear me out before you click off the video. You're like, oh my God, She's I heard like... the term jailer. Hear me out. Let's oh, talk God. about Zalatov. Oh, no. okay. And then at the end, Leaving. you can tell me what an idiot yeah. I am. Yeah. Okay. So the origin of Zalatov, what exactly she is, is unknown. Right. From the scrolls of lore, we learned that Zalatov has its dark genesis in an age long before the Horde and the What Alliance. are they calling her in the new... They called her something in the new... Um... And the release and, and at BlizzCon, the, the, the Harbinger of the Void or something like that. They kept calling her something like that. They haven't called her an own god yet, even though that's still speculation out there. And uh, and they haven't, well, obviously they haven't called her Azeroth, so that's another thing. Let's see a little bit more about it. An what age when the legendary old gods and the Black Empire engulfed the world in shadow. Right. There are many theories concerning the Blaze creation. The more outlandish claim that is all that remains of a forgotten old god who was consumed by its kin in the early days of the Black Empire. Other yeah, that she was the most that powerful of the old gods. Is the claw of Yasharaj ripped from the old? Yeah, I, d I don't think that one's true anymore. The claw of Yasharaj stuff, I think, is uh, is old news. The the her being the most powerful old god of them all. Now that's an interesting one, and that all the other old gods, uh, you know, teamed up to defeat her. That could be one. Now, one thing I still, uh, you know, struggle with or think about all the time is, you know, Nizoth. You, know, you guys remember Nizoth? I still think we don't kill him, but we didn't kill him. But at, you know, BlizzCon, they were saying we killed all the old gods. Whatever. I'm gonna. Come. We'll look into let that us later. Lay waste to this realm. Thank you for the sub on YouTube, too, Bilar. But here's the thing: Nizoth did. He knew who Zalateth was. He teamed up with her in uh, in BFA. You remember when he gave us the gift of Nizoth? She brought us. She brought him Zalatath and moved on into her portal. They were kind of worked together. If she was this old god that was defeated, she was ultra powerful, ultra dangerous. So they all teamed up, including Nazath, against her. Why did Nazath team up with her now? What is his plan? He is the ultimate planner. He must have been seeing something in the future and a good reason to help, uh, you know, Zalatath return to her former glory. Now, again, this is all assuming that she is, in fact, the most powerful old god of the old gods. But that's that's still speculative lore too. God's monstrous form and bestowed upon its servants for use in <laughs> ritual sacrifices. As unbelievable the as these gods. stories are, perhaps there is a truth to them. Zalatov pulses with the foul essence Dude. of the old gods. It is even said that the blade can grant its owner visions of the Black Empire. Right. But all who have looked upon such horrors have lost themselves to madness. Mighty beings known as the Titan Forged eventually defeated the Black Empire. They shackled the old gods and their minions in prisons beneath the earth. Right. Harmony descended on Azeroth, but it was not the last. Zalatov made sure of that. The blade remained in the world, passing from mortal hands to mortal hands and leaving only death and chaos in its wake. We know that the war within doesn't mean just fighting within Azeroth, but it's also a conflict within ourselves. So what would a Zalatov be struggling with, be fighting for? Is she an unnumbered old god devoured by the others? Is she the Dreadlord that infiltrated the, the cosmic domains of the Void and then got caught? Is she the dark side of Alun? We don't know. Everything is possible this time, and I just want to throw another idea the, into the mix. What if Zalatov... Is the dark the, side of a loon? I haven't heard that one before, but I guess a loon with all the moon shit and everything, there's a light side and a dark side. Could be. Dark side of Azeroth herself, and she will be what the Jailer was unable to be. Every event oh, God, this guy. We hear in the trailer that Illyria has a different experience compared to the others. Right. Describing communicating with Azeroth as hearing a song, it feeling radiant, it, there are terms that we heard before, but to our void connected Illyria, she only hears shadowed, haunting her from below, yeah. whispers that also, once upon a time, really wanted her to take care of her sister Sylvanas. The fate of our world 
rests upon the edge of a knife. And our battle lies deep within. Hold on, the fate of our world rests on the edge of a knife. That's an interesting one, because Zalatesh was in fact imprisoned in a knife. And our battle lies deep within. Or is she talking about the edge of a knife in terms of the sword? Sargeras's sword that's been plunged into the planet, and now, you know, the edge of that very that edge of that sword or knife is now within the planet doing something. Uh, th those are two interesting takes. I hadn't really thought about what she said there. What sword? Knife yeah. waifu, edge of a knife, and our battle lies deep within. Zalatesh's new models hot, are incredibly well done, reminding a lot of people to the cycles of the moon or a dark and a loon. So why the idea that Zalatov could be Azrael's evil counterparts? Well, we've had the old gods infect astral spirits, and for a lot of years... Now, just going deeper real quick on Zalatess's eyes. You know what her eyes remind me of? Uh, if you guys remember, hold on. I'll try to find it. I hate to do this. I hate to bring Shadowlands back up. But uh, um, basically every single cinematic always kind of ends with, uh, you know, the logo and all that shit. If I can remember... If I can bring this up. Did they just go tr transition into it? Yeah, they did. I want to see one of the expansions that we talked about. Let's see. Uh, what? Which, let's battle for Azeroth, maybe? There, her eyes remind me of, like, the... Um, what's it called? How the logo always comes together. Let me see. I'm pulling this up right here. The way the logo always comes together in the end. Kind of did it. The way the logo always looks, I don't know, with the light shining from behind and the way her eyes look, it just reminds me of that. Now, we kind of do know, looking at the logo over and over, the world soul being imprisoned and all that stuff that we talked about in our last video, all this stuff kind of reminds me of that. It, it just just the way it looks. Look at that. I mean, the world soul, again, coming through. All of that shit with the planet and how it always lines up in the logo, it just reminded me of her eyes the first time I saw it. And our battle lies deep within. Zelotov's eyes it's called an eclipse, Sam. Yeah, I know. That's that's kind of what I guess they're showing there every time is the light shining through the background of the sphere. Incredibly well done, reminding a lot of people to the cycles of the moon or a dark and a loon. So why the idea that Zelotov could be Azrael's evil counterparts? Well, we've had the old gods infect Azrael's spirits, and for a lot of years, they were able to corrupt her until the arrival of the Titans, right? The days in which the Black Empire ruled the world. The Titan Agrimar sent something extraordinary here. The tranquil dreams of a slumbering world soul billowing across the cosmos. The song of life led him to a world that the Pantheon had not yet discovered. A world they would later name Azrael. Nestled within the world's core was one of Agrimar's kin. One far more powerful than any yet encountered. The right, spirit was is, so mighty that, lore. that Agrimar sensed his dreams, even through the din of activity that rattled across the world's surface. Yet as Agrimar drew close to the Azeroth and beheld the world, horror seized him. Void energy shrouded the world's surface like a layer of diseased flesh. From the ruined landscape rose the old gods and the Black Empire. Miraculously, the nascent titan spirits remained uncorrupted. But Agrimar knew there was only a matter of time before it succumbed to the void. Yes. That's how the discovery has been described. And so the Titans went to work, cleansed the surface, imprisoned the old gods, and put machines into place in order to give that spirit a chance to grow. But they never directly dealt with any corruption that might have already happened. While she might not have fully succumbed to corruption... Yes, of course, her eyes also do look like an eclipse. I know that, okay? That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that it doesn't look like an eclipse. I'm saying it looks like the background of her... Uh, uh, of what's it called? The way they always put the logo together in the expansions. It's wider than the moon. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. We're gonna. You literally sent me a video of an eclipse. Yes, I understand what an eclipse looks like. Of course, her eyes do somewhat look like this, especially with the light shining through more at one point than the other. The way they were on the bottom. Yeah, it looks like an eclipse. I agree. Any. Uh, Old gods were on the planet long enough for the tendrils to burrow so deep that just ripping out the old gods was not an option, as that would do far too much damage to the soul, and they wanted to save her. Then, to the how or the why? Well, my first brain fart was that Azrov was simply able to like contain and expel her own corruption, like a darkened spirit that she cast out herself. But then I remembered that someone else already tore her spirit apart. The war against the Black Empire, it was a difficult one to win. And while confronted the old god Yasharaj, the most powerful and wicked of the old gods, the darkness seemed to dominate. 
order was not going to cleanse this corruption today. So, against the better judgment, Amanfu reached down and ripped, ripped out Yasherash. Ripped him out Small of the parts of the creature would fall back onto the planet. That's why its heart was underneath Pandaria. But ripping it out also caused quite a bit of devastation. A constant stream of volatile arcane energy bled from the colossal rifts, lashing right. out across the world. The keepers knew that for? if they left it unattended, these energies would consume Azeroth over time. So they put up the Well of Eternity as a band-aid. And then later, we read about Keeper Freya wandering the world, searching for areas where the Well of Eternity's energies had coalesced. More than just Yasharaj came out when Amanful tore him away. Could it be that the blade itself is indeed the toe of Yasharaj? So they rip out the old god, little pieces fall okay, back into the, the planet. Pieces fell back, like his toe, but also a corrupted maybe. side of Azeroth, a portion of her spirit, right? They then place that portion of her spirit, wicked, wounded, they place that within that toe with the aid of the old god Nazoth. There it houses his weakened state away from the prying eyes of the Titans with their own plan in mind for the rest of her soul. We must rebuild the final Titan. So as we now know, the story is portrayed as if Amanful reached down to secure victory. But what if there was more to it, to the High Father's actions? There's now a book in the new patch which describes how the High Father lost his shit when Aeonar planted a tree from a loon. Right. This went against his complete sense of order. Two instances right. of he him. Right. He didn't like the 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 unbound life, essentially life that was like basically uncontrolled. He thought it was disorderly, and he didn't like that shit at all ripping out things out of the planets that go against their vision. Would someone like Amanful be satisfied with letting this infected titan spirit just be, just grow and wake up one day? Now, I'm not saying that he was like Sargeras and figured that all corruption had to be destroyed, but they did imprison the elements in their neat little elemental planes. They did imprison the old gods in their subterranean vaults. Some of you looked at the logo for the new Warcraft expansions, yeah, and you saw this. the similarities to the uh, prisons, to the vaults used to house the primal incarnates. Yeah. Could they have decided to imprison Azeroth as well? They did. This world is a prison. Uh, yeah. Right, fair enough. Perhaps yeah. a corrupt... We already looked at pictures of the world soul side by side with the with the prison from uh, um, Iridicron, and they are, like, exactly similar. So I already said, what we saw in the cinematic, that, that picture of Azeroth is not actually Azeroth. That is the wall of her prison. That is 100% the wall of her prison. We confirmed that in the last YouTube video. The corrupted portion of Astral Spirits has been housed within the blade and is now working on freeing herself, on reuniting with the rest of her spirits. But where does the Jailer part come from, like the manipulation and whatnot? Well, remember how they retroactively had the Jailer invade the story of Warcraft come, and then manipulate things from behind the scenes? Waste to this realm. Speaking of YouTube, Jerry, thank you for the, the sub on YouTube. What if I told you that Zalatov has already done the same? That we already know about her manipulating certain events, but that has played out a far more active role after being introduced and has been far better received than the Jailer ever was. Meaning that if that connection is there, that Azeroth herself has been moving pieces around in order to facilitate her release. Jailer right. in the Maw, Azeroth in whatever prison she's at. So the scrolls tell us, scrolls from back in Legion, that Zalatov passed from mortal hands to mortal hands and left only death and chaos in its wake. A right. portion of history undescribed. And then one example comes in, which is the troll Zando, who was manipulated into making blood offerings to Kefix, one of the two Kefraxi that took out Keeper Tear. You might have done the new scenario with Keeper Tear and Dragonflights. That was that moment in which they died. Now the creature came to life after Zando yeah, and his followers did the rituals. And then Zando, or his followers, were never seen again. Now how could that possibly matter for our story, something that happened so long ago? Well, the connections, they're kind of crazy. Buckle up. The Zandalari okay. trolls would bring their tribes together and eventually defeat Kefix. Upon the remains, they build Zulaman. The Amani Empire would then enter the... Didn't, didn't Blizzard say something about the Amani trolls coming back? I believe they did. I'm, I'm, I can't be tripping. I didn't make that shit up. I'm pretty sure they said the Amani trolls are so, at some point would be relevant again. And that's interesting because we, the second expansion, uh, Midnight... It's supposed to be about like uniting the elf, elven races. Like they, they, they said that that's <laughs> never gonna die. Yeah, they said that that, that expansion is gonna be about that. That's why we're getting like a Quelthlos revamp and all that stuff. And we do know that in fact the Amani trolls and um, the night elves have like a long history of fighting. Or, sorry, not night elves. The uh, the high elves. They were the high elves at that time. They have a long bloody history of going back and forth with each other. So I think the Amani trolls could certainly become 
relevant again if we're talking about uniting the elves in Quel'Thalas once again, because they still don't like each other. So uh, you remember he said, I spit on the horde and all that shit and the, and the whole thing uh, for Zolomon the raid? It's because he hated the fact that the high elves were now the blood elves and they had joined the horde. He couldn't stand the, the, the blood elves. He hated them. So uh, it could be interesting that we get more lore from them. And I guess that lore is attached to Zalatash, from what uh, Mr. Noble's saying here. So all of that's related. War with the early human tribes, those are roughy people that you might remember from the presentation. Through the union of human you and elf, yeah. the trolls were defeated. A union that would mean a pledge, a bond that would last forever. Whenever the humans would need them, the elves would be there for them. The elves would be at their side. Enter right. the horde evading Azeroth and the alliance being formed. The last descendant of Arator, Enduin Lothar, calling to aid, calling for the elves to honor their promise. Only a token force was sent. Illyria Windrunner showed up on her own accord. And that's where she met Trevelyan. A love of the ages played out. They were brought together. These two then would go on to join the Army of the Light. She would embrace the Void while he stuck true to the Naru and the Light. These two, at the very least, Illyria, are going to play their parts. It's, it's, it's all connected, man. <laughs> it is. It's shit. all connected. That one Kifix defeat the Zulaman Empire all the way down to Illyria and Trevelyan. It's all connected, but there's even more than that. There's even more than just the tier scenario in Dragonflight, Illyria, and the Arafi announced for the next expansion. We also have Moira Paurus on Bronzebeard and her son Dagran. Now, how are they possibly connected to Zalatov and, and Azeroth and the Blade and all that? Besides her father being the literal speaker of Azeroth, the King of Diamonds who was been made upon, there's also a great, great, great whatever grandmother called Motgut who once wielded Zalatov. From chapter 4 of Motgut's Doom, concerning the day the Dark Iron Sorceress acquired Zalatov, Motgut embraced her clan's long history of studying arcane magic. As the wife of Sorcerer Fane Fauruzan, she had the first pick of the Dark Iron's most powerful enchanted artifacts, yet she was never okay. quite satisfied with the offerings on hand. Motgut would often dispatch her servants to find new relics that she could study and use as instruments in the creation of spells. One of sure. these dwarves returned with a blade that frummed with dark energy. Oh, she got Motgut Zalatesh. was immediately taken okay. by it. For days, she retreated into her archives to unravel the dagger's mysteries. At times, she could be seen talking to the weapon. When she later emerged, Motgut called for the dwarf who had brought the blade in order to thank Calling him. Calling it my precious No friend. one could find him. No one could even remember his name or his face. It was as if he had simply vanished race, yes. into thin air. True. From chapter 23 of Motgut's Doom, concerning the battle between the Dark Iron Clan and the Wild Hammer Clan in Grim Batul. Bitter rivals these two clans were, neither side showed the other mercy. The Wild Hammer's bravery was their greatest weapon, and Motgut sought to take that from them. Under the thunderous clash of Hammond Damn. against X, she screamed an incantation and woke. Considering this is like really, a, we're getting like a dwarfish expansion. I wonder if we're gonna expand, if we're gonna like see this lore in game, like the whole battle between these dwarven races. Uh, this would be cool, and I guess it is relevant to Zalatesh, so we might actually see this stuff. In spell work, she slid her enchanted dagger over her palm and let blood spill onto the stones. Motgut's fall ritual brought Grimbatol's shadows to life. They sprang from the city's dark nooks and crannies, falling upon the wild hammers with blades forged of night. From chapter 27 of Motgut's Doom, recount to the final moments of the dark invasion of Grimbatol. Okay. The fate of the wild hammer and dark iron would be decided. The sorceress unleashed her dark power on Cardros, but he pressed oh, his attack. Full void? Then Motgut reached for her black blade, the weapon that had turned Grimbatol into a den of nightmare. It was not there. She had lost her cherished weapon. Or, oh, as some shit. would claim, the weapon had abandoned her. So I was going to say, she got up and ran hammer, away. Cardros mortally wounded Motgut and secured victory for the Wildhammers. It is said that as the Damn. sorceress lay dying, she repeated one phrase over and over again. What? You promised. The darkness unleashed in Grim Batol mm -hmm. would push the Wildhammer clan into friendly... Sorry, that confirms she was essentially... She was talking to the Blade all the time, and she says, you promised. Oh, I wonder what was promised. What is to come? What the jailer... Patience with the bronze beards, but also abandoning their home and promised. set up in airy peaks. The place would house a lot of grim moments, like the enslavement of Alex Straza, a questline showing this moment had to be adjusted for Dragonflight. In turn, oh, yeah. the death of his wife, Motgut, had quite the effect on the leader of the Dark Islands, and it affected his spell work. 
accidentally unleashing Ragnaros the Fire Lord upon the world, sending up Blackrock Mountain with its molten core and enslaved the Dark Islands to the will of the Fire Lord. Fast forward into the future, and we would see Moira be kidnapped by the Dark Islands, fall in love with Faruzan, their leader. From within the mountain, she manipulated events for the Horde and Alliance in Classic, having them take care of business within the mountain, and then she returned home. First, expecting to just dominate the place, take over from her dad, eventually have her son rule in her stead. They quickly put a stop to that dream. Instead, there will be a council representing all the clans. Yes, but Moira the showed hammers. them what it was like to trust each other, to build a future for her son, who has a rightful claim to both the Bronze Beards and the Dark Iron Throne. Light and dark embodied within her child. A story of fractured wars, which is going to be repeated during the War Within. More connections can be made, like how the orcs wielded her, or how we would take Zalatov into Tears Tomb and powder up, or how for the paladins there was this unit of the void coming after us, and this void unit we'd also see in Tears scenario. Point being, Zalatov's fingers are on an oddly amount of events related yeah. to the war within and beyond. Events that happened centuries ago are now playing well, their part. Well, now we've seen, you know, the connection between um, the Amani trolls. The elves and the dwarves. And those are essentially now three races that have been confirmed to be very central to the next three expansions. So there are, there are certainly, like, this lore is going to continue forward into these next three expansions. Obviously, we already knew that Zalatesh is going to continue on here. But I, I had no idea that the connections between these races existed. I thought, you know, the Blizzard just picking races to put in the expansions. No, they all have background stories connected to her. The jailer was stuck in a maw. Could Azeroth be stuck inside, moving pawns around and get things done? Again, as I said, it's just throwing out some ideas, some stuff to chew on. At the same time, while there's definitely a pattern of manipulation by Zalatov, it might just be to get the destruction of Azeroth going in service of the Void. Right. I'm going to do a deeper dive because there's also the Whispers to consider and, and what she's done before and, and the Old Gods and the Void and the Void Lords, all the good stuff. But I didn't want to do this video because it's an interesting topic and I want to dive much further into it. Of course, then the question becomes... If this is truly what's happening, right? If this is like her darkened self working to free Azeroth from within, working to free Azeroth from the yoke of the Titan's orderly oppression, that? what happens when she that? does get free? What happens at the hour of her third death? At the hour of her third death, she ushers in our coming. Look. Damn. I'm just I'm just really excited to be, you know, excited yeah. again. I'm really happy to look at the future of the Store of Warcraft, and I'm just curious what they're going to do. For now, though, uh, thank you very much for watching, everyone. By all means, let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below. Subscribe if you like my videos. And until next time, see ya. Yeah, like, look, the the whole thing with the uh, with the logos and everything and what it all means. I definitely think Azeroth has imprisoned that that line. Exactly. By the way, that's what going that's wild. That shit talking about that shit again in the hour of our third and our third death, her third death. Uh, uh, real quick with the with the what the hell? Where is it? With the logos, I wanted to just touch on this real quick because we talked about how um, you know those those rings. Uh, with the with the runes on them are in fact like imprison mechanisms that are created by um, by the Titans, and we've seen these runes from the beginnings of time. I mean, the old the, the World of Warcraft logo from the very beginning has always had these uh, this ring around the world. I mean, look at this. This is the original got the original WoW logo right here. We see the ring, right? And th this is supposed to be like a Titan ring at this point. We've somewhat understood that this is a Titan ring around here. We look at the ring in the first one and it's starting to break. You guys see that? The breakage of the ring right here. If we look at the if we look at the continuation of these which is uh, the midnight expansion as they're calling it, I believe. Uh, check this out. The ring starts to shatter here. And then if we look at the midnight expansion, that ring is fucked. It's even more shattered than it was before. So I definitely think whatever this imprisonment mechanism is going to slowly shatter throughout this World Soul Saga. That's what we're seeing here. And then, of course, we get to the Titan one, and oh, it's reconstructed. What the hell is this? What's going on? It's all back to normal. Everything's even better than it was before. In fact, we have a, an additional ring now going across the front. What does this all mean? I don't know. Lord of the Rings, Warcraft of the Rings, who knows? But all of this stuff is Titan-related. We know that. And I think it's interesting that we're seeing, like, the degradation of the ring from logo to logo until we get to the last one, and that's reconstructed. You can't have a prison with a jailer. Yeah. Yeah, the Jailer's coming back. Confirmed here. Confirmed here.